Hey what's up guys welcome to my channel and today in this video we are going to write the service code so that we are able to create a project when finally the fetch is happening. Now this is the fourth video of this series and if you have liked the video so far and you are generally interested in the project then I would request you to hit the like button and do share the videos so that other users are able to also reach out to this and they are able to benefit from that. Now let's get back to business. I'll quickly walk you through what we have done so far. So we have a list of projects being displayed over here and then we created in our last video this form along with its test. Right now we had around 10 tests uh, for the entire application and in this video we will be additionally writing three tests which will cover the aspect of creating a project when it has fetched the data from GitLab server. So let's get started. This is my GitLab service test file and what I have done is I have created these three tests. Let's first look at the three scenarios. So the first one is that it creates a project when the project is not present. Fair enough, So which, which basically means that it is an insert. The second one is it updates the project if it exists and latest update does not match. Now this is something which I'm going to change later on in the validation because if you remember, I'll just show you uh, project controller. We have a unique project ID thing. So if someone wants to update anything, I, I wanted to have that in place. Okay, uh, any manual kind of update. And then the third one is that does not do anything if there are no updates. So with these three services, uh, rather service test in place, let's understand what we are doing. Okay, so what is this first line of code? Well, what is happening is when we are getting the data from GitLab server, there are quite a few things which are being used inside the service. So I'll quickly first sh show you the service. Uh, this is the entry point, fetch GitLab project, because if we go into our event service provider, we were raising the fetch GitLab project event. I will show you the controller as well, just so that you feel the whole flow over here. So now this is the store, form is submitted, event is raised. The event service provider says that this particular event when it is raised, right, we need to call this handler or rather this listener and this listener has a code to call the fetch GitLab project function. Okay. So we are here, we get the project ID. Now there is a flag I'm keeping for, you know, updated equals false and everything. And then I'll walk you through this code, but just Let's look at the create function. So in the create, this is you know, the project data is something which we are getting from the request object. And there are quite a few keys if you see over here. Now it is pretty difficult to mock all of these things. And if I could somehow inject the actual response to my service and see if the service is behaving properly or not, then it will be great, right? So what I did is let me open my postman. Inside my postman, if you see, I have this base URL, this project ID, and if I'm sending my request to GitLab server, okay, you can see this is the payload. So what I did is I literally created a file called GitLab project and I added everything over here. So now what I need to do is just get this sample data. I do a JSON decode with associative array as true. So I get the payload you know, as a post object. I can send that as an array. So if you see now, I am sending sample data in the mock response. Now what is this? Well, now let me show you Salon. If you go to the testing part, So what happens is Salon allows us to create a mock client. Okay. 
And once we create a mock client, we have the ability to create a mock response and say that you know whenever a call to this URL is made during the test, this is the kind of response that I'm expecting. So that basically means that if I want to mock a 200 error, uh, sorry, not 200 error, but if I want to mock a 200 status code response, I can do that for the same request, by the way. So like this one, correct? So if I want to have a 200 status code, I can send one. If I want to test with, let's say 429, what is my behavior? I can do that. If I want to handle a 500 error, I can do that as well. And this is the beauty because then with the same response code, you can change, uh, change the status codes with different mock responses and you can change, uh, uh, rather test your uh, you know, code's behavior, how they are behaving and what are the, let's say if you are throwing some exception or you are raising some other events where you know you are emailing, you know, you can test all those things. So in my case, what I'm doing is I'm mocking that when this event is, uh, sorry, when this request is made, which is GitLab fetch projects request, mock this particular response. So I have my status code as 200 and I have body with sample data, which is the array, which I just created from the JSON object or the JSON file. Okay. Now I create an instance of GitLab service. I call the fetch GitLab project method and I pass the ID because that's where you see project ID is required. So now let's quickly walk let's walk through the code for the service. So we have a flag and then we are taking the count. Basically we are checking whether this project exists or not. And then I am making a connection. I mean, I'm creating an instance of the connector. I am calling the GitLab fetch projects request. And at this point, because I have a mock client over here, so this is the service. Yeah, because I have a mock client. This response is going to be this JSON, right? So I'm just checking whether it is a not found or not. If it is not, then what we do is request.json. So we are getting the entire JSON. And then if my count is zero, which means the project doesn't exist, I call the create project method. And if my count is not zero, right? Then I set the flag to true and I call the update project. And I'm returning this so that, you know, anywhere if I'm calling the service and I want to look for a success or stuff, I can get that. Now, let's look at the create project. Right now we are not concerned about the update, but what happens to the create? So the create is basically taking the payload as you must have seen. So we have the uh, request JSON in this variable project data, I'm passing that project data. So it's expecting mixed data. I think it can be array if I'm not wrong. Right. And then we create the project. Okay. So what next is part of our test. So we call this and then we are asserting, first of all, whether in the project table, we have a rec one record or not. And then we are asserting whether the data rather whether a query which is on the project table with a where clause that project ID equals this, whether we are getting a result or not. So with these two assertions, we are able to ensure that when the salons request is made, you know, and we are able to fake that res request as well, we are able to create a project. So our code is wired in a way to save that project, right? So this is the beauty of having this kind of JSON um, objects as you know, files. I have you know, kept them inside fixtures. And then this is the update thing. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the sample payload and then I'm changing the updated at. Then again, I'm making the same response. Okay. And at that point, what happens is because my projects um, create uh, updated at is an older one and the project ID is the same as sample 
data ID, right? So I have a project in my database where the updated data is one year back. And then I'm getting a data point or rather the JSON object where the updated at will be a recent one. So in that particular case, what will happen is my code in the service, right? It will first of all find that the count is one. Okay, so it will not go into the create block, it will go into the update block. And in the update block, then what will happen is it will change the updated at with the last activity ID. This is the only change that I'm doing right now. I'm not taking into consideration that the name must have changed. I can, I could have added that. I mean, I can literally do things like, oops. Right, I can like do this. I can change the descriptions and all those fields and stuff. But yeah, uh, you understand the point, right? Okay, so with that in place, in our test, what I have done is again, uh, this is kind of similar. So the mock response, create an instance of the GitLab service, call the fetch GitLab project. My entry point is same. And then there are two private methods which does their individual job, right? If you see, this is my entry point, which is the public method. And um, this public method decides which one to call. So yeah. It will decide what needs to be done and then based on that you no know, things will happen and then i'll assert that i still have one project and that the project's updated at is same as what i had in my sample data's last activity at this is how i'm able to assert that the update is happening and yeah the last one is pretty straightforward. I'm doing all those same things, but the carbon parse is based on the last activity of the JSON file. So both are same. And when both are same, I'm just ensuring that the updated at is the same. So literally there is no change. I mean, to a certain extent, maybe I didn't even need that validation uh, test, but yeah, I felt you know, it is good to just ensure that you know, it doesn't do anything if the updated at is same. So now that our tests are ready, why don't we try to actually fetch a project and see if everything is working properly or not? Because I have feeling there will be certain hurdles because um, when I created my first live video where I was fetching the projects, the URLs and stuff were wrong. So let's quickly check that out. My project ID over here is this. So what I will do is just go over here in this add project form and I hit save. Now it is complaining about an ID and what could be the reason? I have a log over here, so let's see. All right, so you can see what is happening is I'm, I'm expecting an array, okay? So like this, where this, um, you know, when we create uh, send this particular array to this create project method, I'm expecting project data dot ID, but this has a zeroth index, which means I'm uh, calling a URL where somehow there are multiple projects. And the reason for that is what I understood is let's go to the service file. And initially for testing purpose, I had created this as slash projects and GitLab wants us to pass the project ID. Okay, so what we will do is, we'll change this code a bit. First of all, I'll add a constructor and this constructor will have a private variable int of type project ID and then Now, the reason our tests were passing is we took the wrong JSON payload. If we had the payload where this project ID was not mentioned, our tests would have failed. For example, this, okay? If I change this and if I put it over here, I'm sure 
um, let me see this is yeah can you see these tests are failing so obviously your tests are as good as you know the tests you have written and this you know, environment you have created so be aware of that and uh, I made this mistake so you know um, so now we are already passing the project ID but I think the URL was wrong so I did that inside the constructor it is saying make it read only yes we will do that and now if I clean this up in my service so let's quickly look at this um, I have one two three four five six seven eight eight fields uh, one of them is updated at so let's quickly look at the created projects table we have one two three four five six seven and then we have the eight and nine where updated at is something which we are changing and quickly let us look at the project model one two three four five six seven yes because eight and nine are timestamps are already you know, fillable so with this thing done with this change basically I think now my tests are passing obviously and then if I do create I come over here and I pass this ID hit save and it said project queue now my project my queue is right now on sync so that's a different conversation but can you see sample GitLab project I am able to fetch more projects based on this thing let me see if I can try one more this is a public project so maybe what I will do is I'll just add this to show you that this does work okay yeah and we have this so guys this is how you know these things uh, are working uh, one last thing I think it is important to rename this because it says projects but we are really actually fetching one particular project and with PHP storm it will refactor everywhere where you know, that particular thing was uh, being referenced for example over here and I can feel confident about this by running my test because now I can understand that none of the tests are failing so any references have been updated properly so yeah, that's about it guys that's what I wanted to show you in this video if you like this video then do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel